Let's talk. I was giving a little today. Ah, giving. Ah, this is Let's Talk um, Community On Air Listener Call-In Forum (laughs) Program. Keep going. (laughs) Uh, We are here, just here to... Be humiliated. To talk about something and to have everyone who's listening call in and chip into the discussion. And today... Um, anyway, uh, if, yeah, when so if you're you listening, call that's in, you we're talking to. We are open to all <laughs> views, all thoughts and views without judgment. And you can call in to 415-663-8492 or 8317. Uh, when you do call in, you'll hear a little noise as I put you in the system. Hang on until you hear me say you're on the air. Turn down whatever you're listening to. Turn the volume down. Uh, give us a name, and above all, keep the language clean, please. It's a live show. So it's like, like talking about soap. <laughs> I'm sorry. Soap. It slipped out. Yeah, it's a tear. Oh, dear. Anyway, so today we are talking about, it's yes. a broad subject, which Stephen Hurwitz is going to know. Oh, by the way, yes. Stephen Hurwitz is here. Hey, hey. hey there, Stephen. Shelley Rugg is here. <laughs> and I'm Paul Raphael. Paul, yes. And uh, this week we're talking about giving. It's the giving season. It certainly is. Is it not? Yeah. It's the buying season. I think, I think <laughs> Americans <laughs> give this time of the year. So uh, that- it was your idea to do this, so take, take it, it away, away Stephen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking about giving in all its manifestations. I'd have huh? to say that uh, Paul's blurb to, uh, this week was uh, really bought the bright side of giving. And, oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, I so, thought so. And so the, what's the dark side? I didn't diss oh, Christmas we'll get too to much. That. Ooh. <laughs> I saw the dark side. <laughs> the dark side. Well, yes. tell us. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Should we go to the dark side first? Not at all. I think that uh, we can go on to a the. Cheery note. I think people, you know, the joy is in the giving rather than the receiving. I think that's better to give. I think that the endorphins and all the good stuff that your body produces hmm. uh, are activated when we give, and I can see that. Generosity makes us feel good. I think it's for me. It's much harder to receive than give. I have trouble with receiving. Oh. Well, sure we'll have why. to have a show about receiving then. <laughs> well, we can add receiving because giving can. and receiving are. They go hand in hand. They huh? go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. My grandmother once, uh, she wanted to take me shopping and and uh, buy me an outfit. And I just felt really uncomfortable because I felt like, okay, if grandma buys me something, then I'm going to owe grandma something. What am I, mm. what am I in for mm. if I agree to this gift? And then my... I was telling this story to my other grandmother, and she said, whenever someone wants to give you a gift, put out your hands, receive the gift, and say thank you. Mm, that's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's you know? None of this, uh, you know, stressing over what does this mean, and um, but to genuinely receive. Well, you brought up something that yeah. uh, that Paul overlooked, and that is the... Uh, the message in gifts that people make, and it turns out that uh, uh, family members, whoop, family members, are big message givers in their in their gifts. Oh. that's that passive aggressive aspect. <laughs> really? Yeah. Can you give a good example of that? Well, 
If it's, <laughs> okay, sure. okay. Mom wants you to go on a diet, so she gets you membership oh, it's like in the, uh, Weight Watchers, sure. that, lifetime membership. <laughs> that uh, stationary bicycle ad that everyone's all fired up about. The guy who buys his very skinny wife and mother of his child a an exercise bike, and she's, oh, this is so good. And she commits to a year of grueling torture before dawn. Or just leaves it in the corner where those things end up. I never knew what a difference up. it would make in my yeah. life. Everyone. Well, anyway. that's a whole different subject. <laughs> that's that that's how the ad goes? <laughs> Pretty much. That's why everyone's uh, Got to get upset one. about it. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, on the other side of that is you can have very thoughtful gifts. You know, somebody that actually tries to understand who they're giving it to. And, uh, I mean, it's... All well, sorts of good stuff. So, uh, Shelley, you started out with uh, your, the receiver being the recipient of a gift being uh, worried about what they owed the person then. I mean, yeah. isn't that there part, you go. That's part of true giving is that there are no strings attached. Right. right. That there's, this is just given. It, there's nothing There's nothing in return. But call that social, a myth. So we hope it works for you. Yeah. Socially, whatever. though, I think yeah. there's implied uh, expectations. Mm. Not always. It can be. Well, it depends who you're getting the gift from. Right. If it's from your boss and you're uh, working in his office and he gives you a gift out of the blue. Depends uh, how personal it is, you know. <laughs> no, I think giving gifts out of the blue are, is or a, a, lovely. A man in a white van opens the sliding door and hands you a gift. You might. <laughs> So, wow, Paul. Sorry, I'm going dark. <laughs> no, I'm going yeah, dark. I'd like to say on the bright side, though, from my point of view, is that uh, I like to give gifts out of the blue. I, You know, I shop and I might see something my wife might like and I just buy uh, it and bring it to her. I, I enjoy that and she does too. Good. And uh, so, you know. There's some really nice stuff in Gallery Route 1 gift shop, by the way. There you go. Ah. <laughs> just putting a plug in there. A local emporium. Yes. Um <laughs> giving. Well, you know, uh, yes. I used to really embrace this holiday season of gift giving. Mm. And I would work really hard at finding just the most special, mm. perfect gift for different people. And and then there's the wrapping. Mm-hmm. And the whole adventure of wrapping all of these gifts. Right. And... Um, and then I don't know exactly when everything changed for me. Oh, it changed? Yeah. Uh. I just, I couldn't stand the whole commercial capitalist aspect of the whole situation. Mm. And... Um, Yet yeah. there's a gift shop. You <laughs> yes. So, but meanwhile, I'm running a gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a weird uh, situation to live in a capitalist society. You know, we can't really get away from it. We all depend on that exchange. Mm. Um, and you know, I'm yeah. going to take a little issue with that. Go ahead. Well, I just obviously this business of the commercialization of giving is gone way into the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just think in every society, uh, regardless of their um, economic system, giving is a really important part of living. Well, so so there's ways to give, yes. right, that, that don't uh, involve going to the sale on Black Friday. Yes. Right? I'm just going to give people a tip, though. You were talking about your grandmother saying, Put out your hands and say thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I learned that if someone gives you a gift that is inappropriate or you can't stand, you say, "Oh, thanks. I know exactly where I'm going to put this." <laughs> oh, everyone, make make mm. note of that when mm. Stephen gives you a gift <laughs> and he says that, you'll know what it means. Oh, I know exactly where I'm going to put this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! In the yeah. recycling, heard yeah. it, yeah. Exactly. Or in the regifting. How, what what That's about a, yeah. regifting? There's a there's a, a facet of giving. Oh dear! Well, I think that that you know, I think you should be allowed to regift something if it's in good condition and you really didn't derive joy from it. But here's the tip: 
Since you gave a tip, Stephen, yeah. I'm going to give a tip. Do not, I repeat, do not re-gift to the person who gave it to you. Because <laughs> that happened to me. No. It's not like that. That's just, <laughs> you got to keep track of where these gifts come from if yeah. you're going to be in the re-gifting That's thing. right. Because this particular gift, I had very, very carefully bought for this person very specially it was she had two posters of a four poster set and i gave her the other two posters Ah. i think that's pretty thoughtful you know i thought so too and i got them back just the two (laughs) the other ones were on the wall so well you know that's that it really is risky giving somebody the visual objects (laughs) because there's an expectation that they're going to put it on their wall and Oh, yeah, it was a, it very... was a Four Seasons, uh, Alphonse Mucha Four Seasons posters. Mm. They all went together. Yeah. Anyway. Interesting. Well, <laughs> bad regifting. Yes. Uh, Caller, you're on the air. What's your name, please? Good morning. Hello, MK. Um, I've, I've been listening to you guys and making a little list. <gasps> oh, excellent. Uh, Check it twice. Still none of them be missed. Still none of them be missed. No, never mind. Um, uh, I think it's a good idea to give things that you'd like to have in case the person doesn't like it, they can give it to you. <laughs> and that works. Sometimes. Isn't that pretty yeah. uncool, though, to like give something, give it back? I, I tried that well, recently. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily happen. It was... a, lot of, you know, a lot of people like the same kind of strange stuff that I do. And um, it, that, so that works very well hmm. a lot of the time. So how do you handle that, MK? I've gotten one thing back. What? How do you handle that exchange, MK, that you would get the gift back? Would you, would you say, well, well, people know me, so they know that's what, what the deal is. But oh. um, you just say, here, I hope you like this. But if you don't, you know. I'll take it. You can't say, <laughs> everybody. You can't say that to everybody. It's kind of a... Uh, okay. Um, I think people take it too seriously. Um, anyway, that's one thing. Surprise presents are, are good. Um, I have a friend who gets presents from a whole bunch of people, and a lot of them are pretty peculiar. So when you go to her house, she gives door prizes, and those are the things that she doesn't know what to do with, and so she just gives people door prizes and makes them feel good. (laughs) (laughs) That's clever. Like asparagus and, you know, stuff like that. What a great way to kind of purge your home of Mm -hmm. those things that aren't sparking joy for you anymore. And you you can do it by putting numbers in a hat and have them all be the same number, you know, whatever. And um, (laughs) There's an example, though, of passive passive aggressive. (laughs) Oh, Stephen! Anyway, um... (laughs) Uh, let's see what else. Oh, here. here. I don't want this. Once my, then you kick them in the knee because they're rude. Um, <laughs> I can almost dad, reach. <laughs> when my dad was getting very old, and my husband and I were living with him at the end of his life on the coast of Maine, Christmas came around, and my dad gave me a red satin teddy. <laughs> okay. I, just about dropped dead. I'm not kidding you. I was so astonished. Wow, and that's it interesting. Waggled my waggled his eyebrows at me, and I, I didn't know what to do. <gasps> who, who, ga- who gave you this? My Her father. father. Aha. Now, he, How did, old he, were you? did he have dementia at all? No. No. Okay. Well, that's a whole other subject. Yeah, so no. It's grossly know, inappropriate. At, gifts. at the end of my dad's life, I think there was, every once in a while, he seemed to think I was his wife. You know, I don't think I don't think he was he was making a pass at me. Uh-huh. He was sort of making comments about my sex life because we were living in the same house and I was married and I did love my husband and so on and so forth. Yeah. So <laughs> I just thought, but I thought it was very strange. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. um, the best presents I ever got was from another husband, and it was for Christmas, and he gave me an ostrich egg and a tiny Swiss Army knife, <laughs> and that was exactly the perfect thing to do. So I love stuff like that. It is did, nice did when somebody really two gets it. Gifts go together somehow. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just like I just like stuff like that. Nice. Um, and what I have learned over the years in my trial and error life is that if you don't give, you don't get. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be objects. Mm-hmm. It's just better if it isn't. You know, if you if you give of yourself and open yourself up, it helps other people to open toward you. 
mm, the rest yeah. of the world. Yeah. I think that's really true. Yeah. Stephen, yeah. are you going to argue with me about that? No, I'm not. I was. I didn't think I was arguing at all. So you're just okay. You're making Stephen Stephen comments. So I understand. Do you, do you call in and expect to be unchallenged for everything you say? Without not judgment. anymore. <laughs> God, you can challenge me. I I look forward to it. Frankly, I'm scared of you. I'm scared of you, Stephen. Ooh. Oh, give me the diamond draw eye the other day, and it's like ooh. I have been called a bully. So, yeah, let's see. The, for the hills. The best gift you ever got. Hmm. I give the same gift every year to a friend of mine. He loves uh, chocolate, and I go to uh, William Sonoma, and for nine bucks they have uh, this chocolate fudge sauce, which is <laughs> absolutely yeah. the best in the world. And I like finding things that are the best. You know, yeah. but they aren't uh, in their own category. And this is it. And, you know, you pay that nine bucks or 12 bucks and they wrap it for you. And they beautiful gift wrapping. He gets it every year because he loves chocolate and he's happy every year with it. Well, that's great. As far that's, as that's you terrific. Know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, thoughtful thing to do. So you're yeah. cool. Thing. Yeah. You're a very uh, thoughtful one, one, person. One problem that I have with giving is that I can no longer tie bows. Uh, and my hands won't work. Yeah. And so um, that makes me a little bit sad because I always like wrapping stuff in foreign newspapers with beautiful hmm. bows on them. I mean, all sorts of, you know... Well, you're creative. I think you'll them. you'll come up with a whole special way of doing it. Rubber bands or Velcro? There you go. <laughs> Rubber bands are cheaper. <laughs> anyway, yeah. my... my um, Anyway, that's what I have to say to you. Thank you, MK. Today, and it's lovely. I wish you the best on Saturday. Well, thank you oh, for thanks. your gift of listening to us and calling in and, and being part of the program regularly. We really appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, so, happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Have a happy giving thank season. You. And happy New Year and good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> You'll need it. Bye. Thanks, MK. Bye, MK. Bye. And the number is 415-663-8492. Call in and give us, uh, give us your thoughts about giving or the Christmas season or the pressures involved therein or, um, or the non-pressures, perhaps... Maybe you don't give gifts. Maybe you avoid all Christmas gatherings that require a sort of gift giving rather than... How about just going to... We always used to have the ex-miss party where the doors were open all day and people would just bring food or something of their choice and we would be making uh, uh, crepes all day. Oh. And you could bring toppings, for example. It Sounds was lovely. It was. Let's could do it. some fudge sauce. No presents required. Just bring whatever you want to put on a crepe, basically. That was the, the <laughs> idea of it. That sounds good. I go to a Hanukkah party every year, and uh, they play a game. Every, everyone brings a gift uh, wrapped uh, for under $15, mm. and it all goes into uh, the into the middle, and you... Pick a number, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's you pick it in order. And if somebody gets a gift that you want, you're a, you can take it from them, and then they get to pick another one. And when the when the gift has gone through two hands, then it stops. So mm. uh, it's kind of fun. We enjoy that. Mm. Do people bring nice gifts? Yeah, I would say so. Sure. I I are I have a, a family gift exchange I've been present for many years that um, features really 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 bad yeah on purpose yes oh really that bad sounds gifts. interesting hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah like what oh my <laughs> some kind of um, a stuffed weasel. It could be. It could be a stuffed weasel standing under a light post, you know, drinking whiskey, something like that. Yeah. Wow. I That's... would. Gra- I would take that. <laughs> I know exactly where I'm going to put this. <laughs> I know exactly where I'm going to put it. <laughs> I have the perfect place for this. Just not the. But it is fun. Yeah, it's. It, I think playing games is fun. Yeah. yeah not everybody yeah. is of that mind, but. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So, uh, pressure at the Christmas season for buying the perfect gift for your family? For uh, I'm yeah, officially um, sort of a Grinch at this point, Excellent. and I just don't really do a lot of gift giving anymore. I don't send mm. cards. Um, mm. Yeah. That's true. Christmas cards. I uh, no tree. I, mean, I haven't sent. A we Christmas put our pepper card tree in the living room. Fifty years, probably. But uh, yeah. Uh, are there I used still to be Christmas s- cards? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I've had a couple requests from people for my address this year, and I'm like, oh no, I'm going to get a card. <laughs> and that means you have, <laughs> have to send, to send a bit. card. Yeah. So there's the obligation. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to do that. You know, it was part of the whole thing. You, um. You did Christmas cards. Mm. You baked Christmas cookies. Mm. You made Christmas decorations, such as I, one of my favorite things to do was to string popcorn and cranberries for the Christmas tree. I just uh-huh. it took forever, but I just loved how it looked. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, I when I was a kid, we celebrated Hanukkah, which was uh, eight days, and each day we would get. One, either an uncle or an aunt would send a gift, and each day we would get to open one of those. And my friends, you know, Christmas Day, they opened all their gifts, so I used to go around to all my friends <laughs> and go, what did you get? It was a lot of fun, and, a, mm-hmm. you know, they mm-hmm. were. I celebrated both holidays that way. Good. Yeah. <laughs> the giving season. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, I had a thought. No, it went away. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually finish. <laughs> they do finish Still my uh, on top of the world. My yeah. list of activities. Oh yes. Yeah. So there's the decorating, right? And then there's the Christmas shopping. Then mm. there's all the wrapping, and then there's going to the different gatherings. And if you were like me and you had divorced parents, uh, there may be uh, as many as three or four gatherings to attend. That took a lot of energy. And that meant presents, three or four more, at least, presents. Oh, yeah. And and, wow. and not to mention all the food yeah. prep. Yeah. And so it's a lot. And I, I, it's, I just kind of let go of a lot of that. I think we yeah. saw somebody that... We uh, do. We have a caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? But this is, it's okay. I'm going to tell Shelly. <laughs> good thing to do with your popcorn and cranberry strings is put them outside after Christmas for the birds. That That's a great idea. Huh. It's a fun thing for kids to do. Yeah, it is. You know, through your little bird friends and then they become ornithologists. It's terrific. Nice. Yeah, very good idea. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking of seagull. You take, do you take them off the strings first? Or? I don't think you would need to. Because seagulls can just... will just grab them if you get... It's the old trick about... One seagull at each end of a string, and oh, and they become one. <laughs> Two se- seagulls become one, attached by a I'm piece sorry, of thread. I'm sorry, I'm consistently dark today. I think it's well. You were I... so bright in the, in your write up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a Christmas tree, either of you? No. Do you have a menorah? Yes, we light candles at my house. Okay. Yeah. It's it you know that brings up something else uh you know this is the darkest time of the year and so many uh traditions of the festival of lights this is sure. when we light up the I do hang uh lights though I love uh I hang up uh holiday lights Oh on the outside of your house or the inside I hang I have I hang it outside my studio what I do is I really don't hang them I make them into a big pile mm. Yeah it's a big pile of lights like mm-hmm. a, just, <laughs> a big pile of bothered. lights. Just leave them in the box. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, they're nice in a big pile. It's no, yeah. I know. Yeah, it looks. Uh, like, no, yeah. we don't have a Christmas tree. No Christmas decorations because we're going to Los Angeles for Christmas. Oh. Are you anti uh, Christmas? Oh, I am. Yeah. Resent it. Oh, so. I resent. I, pff, I, what? Just is don't this, don't do it. Is yeah. it because of the commercialism, or is it just yeah, and the religion involved? I mean, it's ridiculous. You, I, I think it's beyond I, the religious I, aspect, though. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, it depends on on who you and are. The horrible music and the <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and the fact that it starts in November now. Oh, uh, um, actually, in oct- end of October. October. Yeah, right. yeah. No, it's awful. Uh, uh, it's a lovely time to gather with other people, and that's what it's all about. That's why we used to do the Xmas, because it was a There's great the excuse to have a house full of people all day. It was just fabulous. Yeah. 
And so uh, it's getting together with family this year. We're going and, down. Yeah, to I'd rather focus on the food parts and the the gatherings. Yeah, 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 yeah getting yeah. together with people. So, Although I have to say, yeah. I bought some incredible gifts this year. <laughs> Did you? Look out. I know. I'm not immune to it. But uh, You want to feel good because giving is... The getting. Giving is the <laughs> endorphins. Wait, where have I heard that? <laughs> giving yeah. is the getting. Um, yes, the endorphins uh, from both ends, hopefully. From it's, both sides of the uh, of the equation that uh, the, the recipient... Receives it and goes, wow, this is just what I wanted. Or they go, eh, whatever. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. (laughs) I know just where I'm going to put this. (laughs) Probably spilled the beans too much now. Now we know the code. (laughs) Now now I'm going to bring my gifts in. I know. I, I did have someone request a gift back from me once because I did it that exact thing. I put it away. Can I have that back? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what about bringing wine or you know something that is generic uh is that well, does that count do you still get the same uh uh I, I always take hormones. wine whenever I go to anyone's house anytime so yeah. well so there you go but it's mostly for me so is is it uh, is it an obligation oh, do you good. feel now I have wine. obligation Rings. no i don't no it's just yeah I always take something to as you enter if someone you, else's house, if you polite, really. didn't yeah. bring something, would you feel awkward or uncomfortable or sure bad? Bad. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. But you might feel like, oh, I should have. I should've, wish I would have. You know, I have trouble with potlucks now that you talk about those kind of things. Everybody brings a dish for enough for eleven people. Yeah. So you've got overwhelming amount of food right. and you end up eating it. I just think if everybody... Well, that sounds like a, a personal problem there, Stephen. Well, no, I just think that we overdo it. And I've sometimes... I, Gail uh, doesn't like this, but sometimes say, let's not bring anything to this potluck. Mm. Well, it's... Ooh, I remember several conversations mm. Donna had with you about that. Did she really? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I I've completely blanked those. Are they in the black your hole? Two teenage wolverines with you without bringing anything to the oh, pot. Oh yeah, well Ooh, that man. no, that's that's a that's a full paw. <laughs> no, I agree with you on that one. What about bringing a uh, guest to a party though? What about bringing someone who? Oh uh, well, that's that all depends I, on the. I on like the host. that actually. I like uh, when somebody brings a stranger. Sure. It's if they're all, the right one. It's all about the host. And if it's a sit-down dinner, you know, My maybe Wolverines, not. no. Maybe not. If it's a sit-down, yes. if it's potluck, of course. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about giving, and let me give you this. A high surf advisory is in effect from 3 p.m. Thursday to 3 a.m. Saturday. Northwest swells are expected from uh, 12 to 14 feet at 17 to 18 second periods. Breakers of 16 to 22 feet are possible. Large breaking waves along the coast will lead to increased wave run-up on beaches with waves topping and washing over large rocks and jetties. Use extra caution near the surf zone as these large waves will be capable of sweeping people into the frigid and turbulent ocean water. Never turn your back. Turn your Never back. turn your back on the ocean? ocean. I know. And uh, this is KWMR in Point Reyes Station, 90.5, and media support for KWMR is provided by the Point Reyes Light, family-owned since 1948, providing local news every Thursday in print and online, open Monday through Thursday in downtown Inverness, with information on classified subscriptions, advertising, and more at ptrayslight.com. Dot com or at four one five six six nine one two zero zero, and we're also supported by Point Reyes Vacation Rentals, a local, family-run and community-minded vacation rental business with over twenty-five years of experience in lodging and hospitality management. Point Reyes Vacation Rentals rents and manages homes throughout West Marin. More information at four one five six six three six one one three. Or online at pointraysvacationrentals.com. All right. 
And this is Let's Talk, and we're talking today about giving. Uh, giving of all kinds. So uh, should we talk more about philanthropy rather than the... How about giving advice? <laughs> oh, well now. <laughs> Let me give you some advice. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just going to say that uh, Bill Gates overtook... Uh, Overtook uh, Bezos as the richest man in the world, or I don't know, in the world? Yeah, probably. World's richest individual because he got a uh, $10 billion Pentagon cloud computing contract. Um, oh, line two, really? Yeah, it must be an insider. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, uh, so I, we could talk about big. Philanthropy. Giving. He gives, uh, what, 30, 40, how much does he give? He's given billions of dollars away. Now, we know that mostly the philanthropy is all about tax breaks, right, on income. That, that's why big foundations give money to the arts and to good causes is because whoever is giving it is saving money. So the Bill Gates Foundation is saving Bill Gates millions of dollars in tax. Well, there's big ego involved too getting your name on the hospital or the Yeah. Do you think he orchestra. do you think he has the endorphin rush as well? I think it's no, I don't. Ah. Uh, it's a business decision. Rather. No, I think it's uh they've made a personal commitment. He has that wealth. He's made a he wants to make a difference. And uh I think it He and Bezos two together could no. just save the world could feed everybody in the world. Anyway, hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? My name is Charles, and I have some advice for you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you called to excoriate me. No, no, no not at all. I, uh, well, a couple of things come to mind. The, uh, the first two philanthropic foundations in American history are Carnegie and Rockefeller, uh, over 100 years ago now. And I think that uh, Paul is right that they're used to shield private fortunes from taxation, um, which I think has a very negative effect, uh, uh, ultimately, um, you know, on, on society. Uh, Peter Buffett, uh, Warren's son, um, wrote a, a great op-ed in uh, the New York Times in 2013, which he referred to philanthropy as conscience laundering. <laughs> uh, easy for the billionaire's son to say, I suppose. Um, and he does. He has his own foundation because his, uh, Buffett set all of his children up with him. Um, and uh, and he, he, I think they, they try and, and fund local uh, projects as much as they, they can, but he certainly saw the problem with it. And then I'm re reminded of uh, Will Self's wonderful paraphrase of Hobbes, which is, charity exists to ease the burden of compassion on the rich man, <laughs> um, which is certainly true. Yeah. Um, and uh, but on the other hand, let me say, giving. He just recently, in the last twenty four hours, had a little a giving initiative for somebody who was in need in Marshall, California, and a lot of people in the community uh, donated to, I think, uh, a pretty good cause. And that was a situation in which you know people were were um, uh, doing something charitable. Uh, yeah. But I think it's uh, about somebody that they know, it's in their life, and, mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know, that, that to me is more about a community coming together uh, rather than, you know, I was, like most Americans, very naive about foundations until I remember, oh, about 10 years ago, the Hilton family started suing each other over control of their foundation. I thought, well, if it's just all about giving to museums and to after-school programs for needy tots, um, why are they fighting in court over it? Well, it's because it controls all their family's assets. Hey, Charles. Mm. They have material uh, uh, beneficiaries of, the, of this uh, foundation. Uh, Charles, what do you think? Of, well, how do you feel about giving back? It's always fighting with collectors of Andy Warhol's work. <laughs> are you pre-recorded? <laughs> yep. Sorry, Steve? I say, well, how do you feel about giving back? I want to give back. Well, I mean, the Turks have paid me a golden treasure, and I have nothing because I'm a river to my people. <laughs> Um, uh, I do nothing but give back. Uh, I'm a husk. I've given all I have. Um, but are you are you referring to Gates as giving it back? No, I'm referring to these people who just say, "I want to give back." You know, oh, right. I just wonder what what that means. I don't think it could mean uh, potentially, you know, almost anything. Um, and so that, there's a problem there uh, too. Um, you know, in the sense of 
philanthropy, uh, you know, as a, as a way of, well, as a way of showing status. I mean, this has been studied for a long time, which is after a certain point of wealth accumulation, showing other people how much you can give away is the only way to, to, to oh. advance your status or to enhance your, your status. Virtue Charles signaling. Coke. Virtue signaling, exactly, <laughs> last week so. In a way that only the very wealthy can do. And so somebody says, well, I'll give... I mean, it ha- you, I mean, a, a tiny, well, tiny, but an example of this is uh, Notre Dame burned in Paris, and <laughs> one French billionaire says, I'll give $50 million, and the next is $100 million, and the next is $200 million. Mm. And now the French government has apparently had trouble collecting on all of these grand uh, 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 offers that were made to it. Um, uh, you know, whatever, but uh, in the immediate aftermath of the crisis. Maybe they'll get that money, who knows? But um, <laughs> It was good press at the time. Though. You know, that giving doesn't hurt, the but kind there's... Of, uh, uh, cultural uh, sclerosis that, uh, uh, or ossification that comes from these huge foundations, these huge concentrations of, uh, of, of, of capital. Um, they have a, a big impact on... Uh, what gets research? Uh, uh, you know, what kind of research occur, occurs in the sciences, or or what kind of artistic production you're going to see, or and then you know, scientists and artists and whatever just have to spend their time uh, figuring out. As one of my friend uh, friends said, what is grantable? You know, you can't just propose anything to these uh, uh, individuals and organizations. You have to figure out how you're going to satisfy their uh, agenda or their uh, 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 sort of uh, desires. Uh, and so, yeah, a very good idea that's not grantable. Well, it isn't going to uh, isn't going to make the cut. I don't so, think the uh, that artist needed a grant for the banana duct tape to the wall <laughs> of the Biennale. <laughs> That that was uh, that, that was grantable. Uh, now a banana right now, and if anybody would like to donate, I can bring it and a roll of duct tape. <laughs> I borrow some duct tape uh, to their house uh, immediately. And a hundred and twenty thousand twenty thousand dollar banana and duct tape. I will do this for thirty five grand. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, I mean, Such I, a know, deal. I, Discount I art. fine examples of, of people trying to get together to uh, help out other people in need. I think, uh, you know, when that happens on a personal level, that's great. I think once you start getting to these mega foundations and stuff like that, it's, uh, they become whole little worlds and, and uh, unto themselves. And I, it's, uh, I don't, I, you know, and I, and I think it's also a really negative effect on what people feel themselves to be capable of. I remember being in uh, Marshall, oh, almost 10 years ago now, and somebody saying, Oh, well, uh, no, Paul Fenn's a genius, but uh, it's too late to do something about the climate. So the Gates Foundation is experimenting. I was like, oh, wow, I mean, this is just a, another way of, in which people sort of abandon the idea of their own agency or being able to do something about problems they have with the hope that some benevolent billionaire is just mm-hmm. going to step in and, and do it for us. Mm-hmm. And that that might be the only thing that can potentially happen. That makes me very sad. Uh, Bill Gates, the uh, the philanthropist who brought Monsanto, gave them a huge foothold in Africa, uh, spreading the green revolution around the world. Oh, no, I mean, the World Bank, uh, you know, as one commentator said, Robert McNamara might have caused more damage to the world as president of the World Bank than he did as secretary of defense. <laughs> um, you know, this idea, and again... Uh, well, I just take take one example of, of how this... Uh, uh, We're getting pretty far afield, I think. From giving. Well, yeah. I mean, just uh, the way in which philanthropy is so-called is misused. So Mark Zuckerberg and a bunch of other creepy South Bay billionaires, maybe some North Bay billionaires, too. I don't know why I exclude them. Um, <laughs> they came up with Forward.us, and they have this message about how immigration is a great thing and it's so terrible the way that immigrants are treated, especially that Donald Trump is president, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, what they were really doing was trying to expand the number of H-1B visas that the federal government gives out so that they could import uh, cheap tech workers from India and China and South Korea to replace uh, uh, American uh, citizens yeah. who are more expensive to employ in those fields. Yeah, but it, we're get, we're getting so far afield. Why don't we just take all this corporate, uh, the subject of that, and just put it in a drawer for now and talk about personal giving? Personal giving back yeah. to personal giving. Yeah, let's. Yeah. Uh, Steve, are you, are you good for that? It's lunch? Stephen, by the way. I can come down. <laughs> Not Stevie. <laughs> Mm. Not little Stevie. Well, I, I mean, the yeah. only people who are, there is know a, me well. There can be an aspect of philanthropy that is criminal, right? Criminal in nature that that foundations get set up and appear to be raising money for a good cause when actually 
they have ul- ulterior motives. Hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Ford Foundation is a great example of that, and we can go through the, those. But and I Trump got in trouble for it. <laughs> Uh, uh, himself. Well, I, here's uh, the Milton Friedman's uh, foundation. Friedman set up, uh, his foundation is solely focused on education, right? And what they want to do is bring market forces into the way people are schooled or educated in theory. And so it goes around this, this philanthropic foundation supporting charter schools and chipping away mm-hmm. at the idea that there's any role for public expenditure public and, and uh, you know, mm. uh, or that or that the way that we... Um, uh, you know, uh, think about education should be separate from the way markets uh, operate. Mm. You know, that's a foundation that's set up purely to change the way people think. That doesn't count as giving, though, I think. these. This is just about power. Uh, we have another caller on the other line. So Outrageous. Please hang up on them now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? <clears throat> so this is Colleen. Colleen, how are you? I am fine. So I would like to just let go of all of this negativity about <laughs> giving. Thank you. You know, thank you, Stephen, for bringing that up. I said, you know, it's like, enough already. I mean, it's like, get out of it. Oh, there's, there's not. Because, you know, it's, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. Because giving, it's who giving. If, it, if you expect something in return, it's not giving. Mm-hmm. It's not. No. So, you know, let's get away from the bullshit of, of all of that stuff. Uh, ooh, oh, oh, you got to watch your language. Marie, you can't say that. Oh, no, excuse me. Again. Excuse me. I, I, I apologize. Excuse me. So, oh, dear. in giving, in giving, um, let me tell you a little story. There was uh, my deceased son, you know, Eric. Uh, this was several years ago. He was in between jobs. He really had no money. And that Christmas, he went shopping for the whole family for, I think, under 10 bucks. And the one thing that he gave me was the little hooks to hang the, horn, the ornaments on the Christmas tree because <laughs> he had noticed that I didn't have any when I was taken away. So that's what he gave me. And it's like, and I forget what, what he gave other people. But, you know, that's the gift I remember the most because it was not about the cost. It was not about anything other than a little gift. Right. And he saw and something. He saw he a need. Saw, he noticed. He paid and, attention. And, and he was... He was one I always noticed. I mean, the gifts I've gotten from him over the years was always what you you knew he had thought about it. He had really thought about it, and that's what he did. So that's what I'm trying to learn. So, like, what do I notice that people might enjoy? Yeah. And you gave be, me a terrific gift. It, it may be part of my own stuff. Sometimes I've given away. One year I went to my bookcase, and I got all of my bookcase, all the books out, the extra books, and I gave it to the family, my family, because it's like I had picked them, okay, well, they, and it didn't cost me a dime because it was books I had on the bookshelf. But they were they really enjoyed it. Nice, yeah. Yeah, so I just would like to get back to the, the get rid of the negativity around giving, yeah, some people, that's what they do. So what? What do you choose to do? Yeah. I, re- I remember one of the things I really enjoyed when I was a kid, um, and I think I would still enjoy, is um, when we get together as a family and we make gifts for everyone. Oh, we did that a lot as a child. Yeah. You know, we did that a lot. In the last few years, what I do, I pick berries and make jellies and, you know, and I just kind of find something out in nature or get some local olive oil or, you know, stuff that people can use. Yeah. You know, so. But I, I just would like us to just, you know, be in the positive aspect of giving. And if you give something and expecting something in return, shame on you. Uh, oh. <laughs> but aren't we expecting uh, somebody to give us some positive response nobody be, can, nobody will give you. something and, yeah, and wants silence of course it would be a thank you of course it would be a thank you but it's like don't if, if like don't do it with expecting that you need to get something back right it's like we're really the sure. purity of i'm really giving that because it comes from my heart mm-hmm. you know and i really would like us to and i think marshall does a lot of that the whole yeah. uh, the community of marshall there's a lot of of giving that goes on all the time. There's a vulnerability to giving in some oh, sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, how does it make you vulnerable, Steve? Well, <laughs> <laughs> you naughty. Uh, Get him a new little no, I, it's vulnerable because in some sense you give and you do want a positive response. And uh, if you don't get it, you're 
uh, if you don't get it, you are disappointed. I mean, I find that. Well, but I think it's sort of contra the spirit that Corinne is encouraging that you, you give blithely without something in return. I know. Right. And I it's can't nice do that. To get, it's nice to get like a hug, of course, and a thank you or appreciation. But what I'm saying is like sometimes I think we, we, we as human beings, we we'll give out like, okay, how can I get this? Okay, how can I, quote unquote, seduce them to, you know, like you, you do something, you know, and it, it may be in taking somebody out to dinner several time, and maybe whatever you're trying to impress, you know, to, to, to get something. And, and, and I don't know. I just, I, I prefer to be more pure in my heart. And no. if that's naive, fine, great, then I'm naive. <laughs> no, that's, that's, what, that's what my peeps call a mitzvah. <laughs> okay. And really the highest form of mitzvah is uh, you give, and the person who gets doesn't know that you gave. Yeah, well, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's a, uh, you know, that's a... Uh, convenient for you, Steve. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you mean you. by that? Good Did Lord. I miss something? No, maybe that $10 million donation for uh, low-income housing in Bolinas was uh, was uh, Stephen Hurwitz. It maybe. It could have been. It could have been. We will never know because that Stephen, he's a wily, he's and a wily one. I wouldn't say if it was because... Uh, of course. Well, it could have been That's me, true. too. Think about that. It could have been Charles. It could have been Charles. Well, thank you so much, guys. I, I, I agree, uh, Corrine, uh, uh, you know, give without expectation of something in return. Sure. That's Charles, you're well, you know, a very high-status life. What happens on the sitcoms all the time, though, yeah. is that, thank you, Charles. You're you know, welcome. people Charles. want to have equal gift-giving and one person is giving an extravagant gift and the other person has something from the, you know, the dime store. And they find out that there's an extravagant gift coming. And so they scramble to right. try and top the extravagant I, gift. I'd call that passive aggressive when you give, <laughs> no, when you give something uh, too expensive for the, for the occasion. Hmm. I think that's inappropriate. Well, I think often, huh. you know, when they have these things, you know, bring a gift uh, under ten dollars, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, well, or whatever. That's kind of limiting, know. but yeah. but but I I do I do want to believe that there's many individuals out there, organizations, individuals, or whatever that really truly give from their heart. I really do believe that. Yeah, and, I agree. And, you know, you can go, you can choose, you know, to to the is the cup. Empty or half full or whatever is like you know it. it, it I like to believe that. It, well, and also, it, I mean, I I was ragging on the Gates Foundation, but the people who actually work at the Gates Foundation, I'm sure, are doing it. Some of them, at least, are doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They oh, really they think they're it, making they, a difference. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I well, they are I, making a difference. I have a handful of people <laughs> I can point out. I know that that does things from. From their heart, you know, in the, in the hmm. financial world, some friends and you know acquaintances and whatever. And I, I, I have to knowing them as individuals, I know that they are doing it because, you know, my my mother-in-law used to say, you know, you can only, I don't know if I can use that word. You can only, okay, um, can you? I don't know. Can you use the word uh, the, the place that you go to relieve yourself? Can you say that word? You mean H E double toothpicks? No, I mean the uh, like W's. <laughs> you got us. <laughs> we're we're trying to be as cryptic w- here as possible. Okay, we don't know. Well, you go in the morning and believe yourself. What is that thing? Called? Oh, oh the toilet. Yes. Oh, I can say the word. You can say toilet. Oh, okay, I can't say toilet. See, I was. Trying I think to- we should move on. You just don't talk about. <laughs> 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 so giving, yes. Yeah. Um, <sighs> anyhow. I, yes. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> there are lovely Good. people in the world. You are one of them, and uh, of course, and you giving, are very giving. Giving without uh, without expectation is, of course, it's the only really, real it's very giving. Relieving. Yeah. It's a very relieving place of being in that space. Yeah, yeah. Donna was one of them. Yeah, you know, she just gave. Yeah. Period. Well, I'm going to pop in here with what might be perceived as a negativity a little bit. Oh no! But here's the thing. I'm, I am a person who needs to get rid of so much stuff, <laughs> and the idea that there's a time of year when I might receive an onslaught of gifts that, you know, might get put on my shelf for a while. Uh, I 
I don't know. I, I just feel like I don't need anything. Mm. So for me, the best gifts are when people come to visit me mm. or Lovely. or gifts of food, things from their garden, things they've baked. Um, yeah. You know, that, that, that it's got more of that human quality and it's the, the quality of, of, of a human exchange mm-hmm. more than an object. Absolutely. And that's where the homemade jellies and stuff like that comes in and the knitted booties or whatever, you know. Yeah. Whatever you have. But I, I also think that, that on the whole thing of in your home, that okay, I look around and say, you know, God, I don't need this anymore. Who can I find that would really like this? You know? mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, I love this idea. I'm going to start working on that. You know? Reusing. Regifting. Yeah, exactly. Regifting. Yeah. 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 Do you tell people you're regifting when you give it to them? I, I Is that appropriate? I sometimes, sure. yeah. I actually got a, a gift here recently from somebody, <laughs> and that person told me, you know, it was, yes, yeah, she said it wasn't me. Somebody had given to her, and it wasn't her. So she gave it unto me because she thought it was more me, and she's absolutely right. It was more me than her. Uh-huh. Very you know, good. It was oh, a you know, personal thing, you know, and a piece of clothing, you know. And it's kind of like, I think that's wonderful. And I, I, I even love to then say, hey, you know, I got it, but you know, it really just wasn't me. But God, it looks great on you. <laughs> <laughs> that's I've perfect, had, I'd say. I've had that happen to me. You know. Yeah. yeah. For um, a number of years, when I'd go visit my grandmother, she, she would always give me something mm-hmm. uh, when I said goodbye mm-hmm. after the visit. Mm. And so over the years, I, I was slowly gathering little pieces of my grandmother in a way. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. That's nice. Yeah. My favorite thing for my grandma, oh, my God, she had this beautiful... I think it was French china of, of a blue little bowl thing, and she would always have little pieces of chocolate in there. So when we kept missing, we'd get a piece of chocolate, right? And can we, you know, can we go, oh, what's in the chocolate? What can we get? So we got a piece of chocolate. So she gave it to me when, you know, she died. But, but And I had a stone, and I'm still looking for it. I mean, I had somebody oh. go into my storage. Well, I had storage in Petaluma several years ago. And it's stone, and I keep... I keep looking around, somebody out there, you know, because it was a very valuable in so many ways. Mm. You know, it was an old piece of china, but it was, it's why I had my... It meant gift. something. It yeah. meant something. Yeah, it takes you yeah. back. Yeah. I, so I keep looking for it out there. There's the antique old show. If anybody <laughs> has it, hand it over. Hand you it can back. drop it off at KWMR <laughs> in Point Reyes Station. <laughs> Well, thank you, Karine. Well, thank you, and thank you for calling gobble, us. Gobble. That's lovely. Gobble, gobble. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. Yes. Okay. Be, Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yes, the uh, the season of giving is upon us. Uh, there's just a it's just something I had here from the BBC: the science behind giving good gifts. Uh, the apparently the average American household spends about $650 on gifts in the holiday season. Uh, Choosing the wrong gift can be kind of risky for relationships. It says you don't have anything in common. Uh, Oh, no. But the important things are don't fret about the price because it's more about the intent and the the connection, uh, something that shows that you have a connection with the person you're giving to. Uh, think longer term. <laughs> well, uh, forget about uniqueness. You don't have to get something. Uh, one study showed we tend to focus on a recipient's unique traits and personality, but this hyper specificity leads us to ignore other aspects of their wants and needs, which may make us buy them an inferior gift. Hmm. Uh, and buying different things for different people. They might all be happier with the same thing. Who knows? Buy based on shared interests. Uh, you could always ask them what they want. Oh, yes. <laughs> and don't overthink it. That is the science of giving, apparently. Oh, gosh. Asking for what you want um, reminds me my my dad would ask the grandkids, you know, give me a list of what you want for Christmas. And some of the grandkids would think big and ask for expensive things. Sure. And my one daughter was always, you know, very thoughtful, and she didn't ask for expensive things. And sure enough, Dad would uh, buy what was on the list. And then she would feel like, 
oh, wow. Like there was this real discrepancy be- between the perceived value of the gifts. Mm. And, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we've was... all, haven't we, perhaps we've done it ourselves. The child who unwraps a present and goes, yeah. <laughs> Moves on. <laughs> I wanted the 2018 version. That's not the oh, one. Whatever. Yeah, your hopes and dreams dashed with a rip of paper. What's this? <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, no, no, no. Let's stay on the positive side. Positive. This has been Let's Talk, and we've been talking about giving. Thank you for giving us your attention and your calls. Thanks to all our listeners and our callers. And uh, let's see, what date is it? No, 12th, uh, 19th. Oh, yeah, we'll be back next week. Okay. I shan't be here for the uh, the Boxing Day program. Oh. Anyway. Um, yes, we'll see you next week with some other fabulous topic. Meanwhile, here's a song about... Oh, wait. Uh, KWMR does not <laughs> take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. And if you feel like giving to this radio station at any time that strikes your fancy, feel free to do so. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Stephen. Good afternoon. And Have a good away day. we go. Bye-bye.